There you go. See you later. See ya. He's done this before, like, eh? Just so we've got. Hang on a minute. What's going on there? <laughs> Can I go that way, or is it better to. You had it all sussed, TJ. I know, it up, it? So I, I, I was a bit optimistic when I said he's done it before. <laughs> Don't talk to me, Dwarf. I'm trying to give this <laughs> fucking. Calm down, Tej. Take a breath. Tej, start to move now. It's not a shift on now, boy. <laughs> oh, fuck. Jesus. This is harder than it looks, man. We ain't going far in this, I can tell you that. Perhaps we should have got one of them. That's what we need, TJ, one of them. Yeah, the budget doesn't stretch to that. It's not a canoe, is it? It's a boat. No, it's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> Before and after. <laughs> the thing is, she said, do you know how to row? And I said, yes, like, like you, it was like... easy. Right, first of all, let's crack a beer. Let's you happy a... with Budweiser? Because that's all we've got. Cheers. Cheers, TJ. Now we're going to have to wait for this <laughs> geezer to go past, and then we'll start. I think if you drink most of that vault, you will be a better rower. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Cheers, lads. Cheers. All right. Show off. He's, he's making it look easy, TJ. So just to give you a little introduction to what is actually going on here, I'm starting a series of video podcasts for YouTube and it's basically me interviewing and having a chat with other DJs. This is Steve and Steve's been behind the decks since about 1985. Is that right, Steve? If I can remember that far back, it's about 85, yeah. So how did you get into it? Um, musical family. i got uncles that are proper musicians playing bands and stuff. Yeah. Uh, one uncle was a DJ. Right. And um, he, um, he's only about 10 years older than me, but um, yeah, he invited me to uh, come along, help him out. And, uh, and how old were you then? 18. 18. I was 18, so um, yeah, obviously the music, loved it. Loved it. And uh, tell me a little bit about the equipment back then. Eighty-five. Um, I suppose most people would have been using decks, um, but we went to the. Uh, we were ahead of our time. We used tapes, tape decks. All right. We okay. didn't even have. Um, we didn't even have a proper box. We had a hi-fi amp. Yeah. And two hi-fi tape decks. Right. And we used to, and it had channel one and channel two. Yeah. So you'd li literally have to flick it from one to the other. Yeah. No mixing. Yeah. And that's how you started. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was great. He's, that's how we did it. Well, not many people can say they DJ'd on and, tape. And, no, and what you what you had to do with that is because there is um, a, not so much of a pause, but you can't mix. Yeah. You had to DJ. You had yeah. to say you had to something. Say it, yeah. yeah. So it just chucked you in straight away. Yeah. But, um, Gift yeah, of the gab from gift of the gab straight in. But um, yeah, cut the beers, give you a Dutch courage, and then yeah. speak. Yeah. I always found that was yeah. at eighteen. That was the best yeah. way. Cut the beers, and then you. Go. But no, it's it's just it was just great at the time. And what what about lighting back then? Was it all make your own lighting? Was there any lighting? D um, d a lot of people used to make their bo their own box lights, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, mm. I mean, you still buy uh, lights. There mm. was um, strobes and uh, you know, floods was yeah. the main thing. Lasers weren't quite on the scene. Um, it was all about floods and yeah. and uh, you know which the lasers today are amazing. No, it was all uh, it was all there was plenty of lights out there to get. Mm. They used to do the traffic light. Do you remember that the box with with oh, yeah, um? Yeah, yeah, I, re I can remember having one of them. Having like a like traffic light. Yeah, 15, yeah, 16, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you used to put a per like a perspex screen over the top of it. I have some screens. And they always used to get kicked in. They always get kicked in. I've still got screens. Um, don't use them very often, but I've still got them. Yeah. Well, I remember you saying, actually, when we were having a beer before, a couple of months ago, that you like the screens because they give out a lot of light on the dance floor. If you're in a, if you're in a darkened room, mm. which DJs liked, if you can, if you can control the light, yeah. um, screens are brilliant because they, they give that effect of, um, you know, Saturday Night Fever. They've got, that, they've yeah, got the yeah. light on the floor. Yeah. And I always think it's good to have screens because if you have, if you are in a room where they take, turn all the lights out, and you haven't got enough lights, yeah. then all of a sudden you're in a dark room with a couple of lights in the yeah. corner. Yeah. But screens 
give you the light. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So people are not bumping into each other. So 1985. Yeah. You're going along with your uncle, helping him out. Um, you're on tapes. Tapes. There's some lights going on, but it's very much like not the sort of lights that you use now. You know, we've yep. obviously moved moved with the times. But what was the music like back then? What was the you know was the quality there with tapes? Compared to, I, I think know. so. Um, everybody says about records being the best, even better than CDs. Mm. But um, you come to one of our gigs, you wouldn't have known. Yeah. You wouldn't have known no different. Mm. Sound systems are probably better these days. But um, back in the day, you wouldn't have known if I was playing a record or a tape. Yeah. Um, so that wasn't really an issue. You know, we just used what we had. And then uh, it's easy, easy to play. Yeah. But. Um, why I got involved, because it was tapes, um, two-man job. One yeah. has to cue the music in. Because yeah, yeah. you get 20 songs on the side of a tape. Yeah. So you, oh God, you, that is a nightmare. You, I, I'm not, I ain't got time as a DJ mm. to cue that in. So you've he, actually got to listen to that, haven't you? He's got you to cue, he like, cues the music select. in, and he gives me a pile of tapes. So I use it like you would use, like a, a record, yeah. but the tapes, are, you're on one specific track. So. But if I remember right, from my childhood and tapes, you have to fast forward to get to a track. There's no like track yeah, select. Exactly. So yeah, if yeah. your track is no, it's, 15, a, it's a real. Yeah, you've got to like. It's a real. Oh, that's stressful. And uh, yeah, and as you know, if you had, did you have a tape deck as a kid? You mm. had a tape deck? And sometimes they chew, <laughs> which yeah. ain't great. Yeah, yeah and, and it, it goes spitting it out. Yeah, it, yeah, it reels itself up. You know, the old uh, pencil. Winding up the yeah. tapes. And what sort of what sort of gigs were were they like? Uh, pub gigs and stuff like that. Um, used to do pub gigs, but um, uncle used to get weddings and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I used to go with him and then mm. uh, cover everything really. Oh. Birthdays, anniversaries. I think one of the first nights we done was like a rock night, and he didn't have too much rock music <laughs> so, so you had to say we struggled <laughs> we struggled a bit so um you've got a couple of kids yeah and you're, you're a dad i'm a dad as well and sometimes i find that i feel guilty when i'm out every weekend djing and you know i work through the week same as you and then yeah. i'm out on a saturday night and it's not just being out you're prepping it during the day you're speaking to the the customers or you know whoever's doing the party throughout the week and prepping music and it does zap a lot of your time and sometimes i feel guilty that like i'm not always available at the weekends did you find that throughout the years i always been sort of lucky i i don't go looking for work mm. but if it if so i'm happy to work yeah but i'm also happy to not work yeah. so you get it's a balance yeah i mean if if you're taking it a little bit more professional, then you, you're you going to be looking for work. Yeah. I never sort of did that. Yeah. If, if people wanted me to DJ, fine. Yeah. If I had a free weekend, then you yeah. spend it with family, yeah. kids. So I started late in life with, with uh, marriage and kids. So yeah. well, I have many years yeah. DJing as, um, without that yeah. pressure. Whereas you, mm. uh, it's, that has been there from yeah. day one for you. Yeah. So I was 18. Mm. Yeah. I, I, 18 you want to be out anyway yeah so to be out and enjoying yourself picking the music yeah <laughs> and then um people enjoying themselves it's 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 ideal well yeah i must admit when i used to do it as a teenager it's a completely different kettle of fish to when i've been doing it now mm. obviously you know and the people that watch this know i had a massive break years yeah, yeah. while i was in the army but um yeah it's different it's very different uh yeah, well yeah. The, the the tracks are the same and you know there's the same type of situations you find yourself in but the feeling is, is a little bit different, I suppose, behind the decks as you get older and you start to realise what actually matters in life. And you, you, yeah, yeah. Definitely. But if you if you if you love it, if you love your music, yeah, you can become a good DJ. Yeah. Because it's just about that. Yeah. And uh, you know, DJing is for me mainly um, weekends. And if you weren't working as a DJ, you'd be trying to find entertainment yourself. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, you're It's there. definitely got to be something that you love doing in order for it to be sustainable. I mean, you've been doing it for decades now. Yeah. And, like you said in the previous video, you're still being asked. 
So you're yeah. doing something right. Yeah, yeah. And not only are you doing something right, uh, for get, to get people to ask you to keep doing it, but you're also enjoying it and loving it. So what do you think the secret to that is for longevity? Well, um, my uncle used to say to me, he said, um, like most things, it'll come and it'll, it'll fade out. Like karaoke did, it come in and it yeah. faded out. But DJing never, parties never fade out mm. because the music is always, it's, if you think about it, it's always upgrading. Yeah. It's, you never play the same gig twice. So the music's always moving forward, but the key to DJing is you are hitting nostalgia, what people remember, mm. you know. But there's always new music. Every gig you do, yeah. you play a track you didn't play last time. Yeah. So it never stops. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's so always, you can't. Yeah. It's always evolve, evolving yeah. um, with the new records that come out. And I think that's... And people, you know, they like to hear new music and that's it. If people want to hear the music, then it will carry on. It's a funny old game, isn't it? Because you yeah. can play one track. Say we're doing 30th birthday parties. You can play one track and it goes down really well. And the following week you do another 30th birthday. You play exactly the same track and it dives and it's as a DJ and after you've been doing it for a while you get these spidey senses where you know what's going to work and what's not and sometimes you get it wrong don't get me wrong yeah. no one's perfect but you just as someone comes up for a request and puts a request in you know whether that's going to work or not yeah and how do you personally deal with the people that come up and say oh can you put this on and you know that that is not the right song to be playing at that event I think um I think you You've got to be a little bit open. Um, I love it when you get a moment when, if you've got a group of friends or family, they may have a song that is to them. Mm. I had one the other day. Um, this guy came up to me. It's in his 40s. It was a party, and he, he asked for Lynn Anderson, Rose Garden. Yeah. I mean, I can't think that I've ever played that. No, I haven't. Right? But I didn't think I'm not going to play that. No. So I went off. I found it. I'm going to play it. And it went down an absolute storm. Yeah. But that's because and it's... And he hasn't stopped playing it since. And do you know what? It's the, it's, it's the, it's the moment you yeah. think, oh my God, I'm, yeah. I'm going to... I know it's specific to them, yeah. their family, yeah. but I thought, I think I'm going to try that next time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's worked. Yeah. You know, and you, I love the moments where... Yeah. You surprise yourself. You surprise yeah. yourself. Uh, yeah, and, um But you are, you know, you. I say, um, good music's good music. Don't, mm. don't matter. Mm. You know, it's... Um, there, there's stuff that don't. Do you get um, lists? Yeah, I get. I often get people a big, sending me long yeah. lists. Sometimes I say to them, "Well, you've given me six hours worth of music, but it's, I've only booked for four hours." I love it when I get two hundred songs, <coughs> and I'll get. The, I'll read through the list, and I'll say, "Pick your ten favourites out, and I'll play them." Mm. I can't play two hundred songs mm. in a night. Mm. It's it's about seventy five songs mm. if you're if you're mm. lucky, so you just have to pick them out. But, um, yeah, people tend to... Well, and, it's, but it's getting more popular, isn't it? P people thinking that yeah, you, you're a jukebox or something. That's my, that's my answer. If somebody asks me to play a list, specific to that list, yeah. and don't variate, I say, you don't want a DJ, you need a, you need a jukebox. Yeah. You pick the music. That's the point. You're yeah. hiring um, a person to, yeah. to make it, it flow. Well, that's it, because you are a DJ, you do it all the time, you're experiencing... For example, <laughs> weddings, right? Go to so many weddings. Many people only go to three or four weddings in their whole life, maybe five, six. Yeah, yeah. You go to weddings consistently, so you know what the type of thing, you're constantly exposed to it. And you don't pay a mechanic to fix your car and then go along and say, oh, actually, do this, undo this, do that. Yeah, do you just tell them let what the to professional do. Yeah. deal yeah. with it and yeah. read the crowd because it's more than just loading a track up and pressing play. It's feeling out yeah. what, you know, it's, it's the thing that you can't really describe. It's the thing that's not, you can't put words to. It's just the, the, the instinct of knowing what's going to work where yeah, yeah. And, and being able to predict a few songs ahead. Yeah. No, uh, I think you've got to try and uh, read the room and you've got to try and do wedding specifically. They're easy and hard. They're easy because you've got all ages. Yeah. Toddlers. So you get to a party, you want to entertain them. Yeah. You've got to play kids' music. And then you got 20 year olds, 30 year olds, 40, 50 year olds, grandparents. They want to rock and roll. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of easy in a way. It mm. picks itself. Mm. But if you go through them stages and something is specifically working, mm. you've made the night. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And don't, don't, you don't play two um, 90s tracks, 
the dance floor's filled and then you go on to somewhere else. Yeah. You stick with, they love yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. My answer to the people that say, what do you play? And I say, what do you want me to play? Mm. I'll play what you want me to play. Because mm. I don't have a, yeah. you don't stick with it. You just, but that's the, tr that's the, that's the gift. And that is the talent because yeah. a lot of people can play dance music and I was set in a club everything's at 125 BPM, it's yeah. easy. Yeah. You try mixing Bon Jovi with the YMCA and then over to the Backstreet Boys and then back to, and then to I don't know, Saturday night. Yeah. It's hard. Not necessarily just the mixing, but to bounce off that energy and create an atmosphere which, which keeps people engaged. Yeah, yeah. Because that's reten we're in the business of retention. Yeah, we yeah. want to retain people, yeah, keep yeah. people yeah. on the dance floor, keep people having a good time and make the bar money or keep the people who's hired you the event like the um, the event yeah going you know? yeah it's retaining people and uh, I'd like um, some people panic when you get to a party I, I got this thing I, I hold them back yeah right I hold them back <laughs> go on I this is not, a nugget here this I is do a... not want yeah. to go to a party get a notepad and pen out I do not want to go to a party at 7 30 yeah and fill the dance floor at eight o'clock yeah of course that is yeah, not yeah. what I yeah. do yeah why are you playing this because people arrive at a party, yeah. a wedding reception, yeah. and they want to relax, talk. You can't give out that's your a, best tracks straight away. That's, yeah, they yeah. want to talk, they want to enjoy the, the, and you, but you start to build a, an ambience yeah. really, yeah. and an atmosphere. Yeah. And they go, oh, well, nobody's dancing. They, people come up, it makes me laugh, they apologize to me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry nobody's dancing. I don't want them to dance. Because yeah. later on, yeah. once they finish talking, and they've had a few more of those, Guess what they want to do? They want to stay on the dance floor. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's the trick of it. No, that it's, is it's, very true, yeah. You d don't worry about yeah. getting people... You can, peak, you can actually peak too early. Yes, I've, I've done I that a few times. I've seen it done. Yeah. I've walked into a place, you know, 7.45, and he's playing Sylvester. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. make me feel, I think, no, 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 you don't... Yeah. And also, um, you probably get asked for this. One of the biggest tracks is Insomnia. Yeah. You know, yeah. but... That's an end of the night of song. Of course, yeah. That is an end of the night song that everyone will dance to. Yeah. Not at eight thirty. Yeah. And, and do you get the, the they want the cheese at eight thirty? Oh, we want the YMC, We want the macarena. Yes. It's like, that is eleven o'clock. That is when everyone. Well, I, 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 um, you, I think, I think you can, um, if people are interested in the dance floor, mm. and they, that's the point. You know, my, me and my uh, uncle used to joke that um, footballers were the worst. They don't want to dance. They just want to sit at the bar. Yeah. And they, but if you get a room full of women, they want to dance. Yeah. So then it's different because they there's a few of them that drift onto the dance floor. So play to the you women. You start playing a few dance tracks, and then all of a sudden everybody's on the dance floor. That's fine. Yeah. But uh, the, the the party stuff, yeah, that's in the middle of the night if mm. they're if they're ready for it. Mm. Yeah. The thing is, have you ever been double booked? What do you mean? What? Have you turned up? Because that's and happened to me. And someone else has and been booked. No, yes, and they've they. they've booked two discos. Yeah, no. And it's basically whoever gets here first yeah. <laughs> gets yeah. the gig. Yeah. <laughs> I've had that a couple of times yeah. where I've turned up and they've already That's a and two people. Well, actually, me and you nearly got double booked. We did. He, he rang me up and said, oh, I can't do this gig because I'm busy. Because oh, I'm busy. across my desk. <laughs> and I went, they've already booked me. <laughs> like, so we would have turned up together. We would have turned up together, yeah. So um, yeah, what no. advice would you give, okay, to 18-year-old Steve... He's just getting into it. It's 2023, so we're not on decks anymore. Um, and we're not, I'm not talking about equipment and stuff, but what any what advice would you give to 18-year-old Steve that, that wants to be a DJ? Just play good music. I mean, if you and I both know, we're the DJ, so it is about our tastes. Mm. We tend to play music that we like. Yeah. But if you've got a taste for good music, play it. Yeah. Uh, there's one... Do you know what the first one most important thing that my uncle taught me when you're DJing? Don't be afraid to change it. If you're playing some music, it's not going well until don't be afraid to change it. Yeah. Change to something completely different different. Yeah. Never be afraid to change it. Because you just don't know. Yeah. That's the that is the first rule. This video podcast has been the first one in a series. You can't do that. Look at him, look. He's all cocky. We're in the hedge, Steve. I told you it was hard, didn't I? This video podcast has been the first out of a series that I hope to do. 
if you are a DJ and you've got some funny stories and you've got a bit of experience, then let me know in the comments. And obviously, if you'd like to be part of this, let me know in the comments. We'll chat and hopefully we'll get you on board and we'll make some great content. Thanks for watching. On board. <laughs> On board. <laughs> Cheers. See you in the next video.